So I've recently been taking Dark Angels to um, a GT and I was super impressed with how competitive and how powerful the Psychic Awakening has made Dark Angels. And I don't think enough people are appreciating that. So today what I'm going to go through is some of the tricks that you're going to see Dark Angels players try and do and the competitive builds that have come out of the Psychic Awakening. So welcome guys, it's Andy here from D6 Evolution I'm gonna look at, and today I'm going to be talking about what I think are the competitive builds with Dark Angels and what you guys playing against Dark Angels need to know about. So I've recently taken Dark Angels to the Glass Hammer GT and I was absolutely astonished at the power of uh, particularly the Talon Masters but the whole army and how well it works together. Now let's quickly dive in, let's talk about the units that you need to know about, what tricks they're going to pull against you and then let's talk about the competitive builds and what you can do against it. So first off, let's talk about Talon Masters. I think this is probably the best unit in the book and something you're probably going to see two to three of in each Dark Angels army because they're just so good. They're character speeders, which means you can't target these guys and that means, that means they're likely to be shooting all game against you. Um, the plus six inch range means that they're really nice at being able to stand off with their 30 inch assault cannons. Um, you're, you're classically going to see one of them as the Warlord and he's going to take the Warlord trait, which ignores the penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons, and that's a six inch aura. Um, so that's effectively giving plus one to hit to all the other Talamasters and Samael and the speeder around him, as well as any flyers which are there as well. So you, you're gonna see these speeders, they're gonna clump together as a ball and they're gonna move around the table. So they're gonna get, they ignore the penalties for moving and shooting heavy weapons. Samael's gonna give them re-rolls to hit. The Talamasters get re-rolls of one to wound and they give out a bubble of ignores cover as well. These guys are absolutely savage. Now, some stratagems you need to know about. The one which is gonna catch people out is when you kill one of them, um, they can use death and duty end because they're a character, which means they're gonna turn around and shoot 18 um, AP2 minor shots at you, um, which is gonna really mess up with your plans. So just be careful of that. Um, the next thing they're gonna do is uh, they can use the Vigilus formation, if they're in it, to get plus one to hit. They can do signal the advance. So if one of them scores a wound on the unit, then the rest of them can get plus one to hit. And the third thing they can do is because they're land speeders, they can use the land speeder stratagem to give full chapter master style rerolls for the entire army against that one target. Um, so they're absolutely savage, this unit is. The way I play these guys is that if my opponent is quite immobile, that's very bad news for them. Um, because all I'm going to do is I'm going to put units behind a big line of sight blocker and I'm going to line up my talent masters behind them. Now, that just means that my opponent can't actually shoot back against these talent masters. They've got good range and they're just going to sit there and shoot them. Now, obviously, if my opponent's got things like Thunderfire cannons, which can shoot out of line of sight, I'm going to put a more durable screen behind there. I usually, I usually use my Deathwing Knights, actually, with the Field of Pain banner, which you're not going to kill. Um, and if you come too close to try and get round, um, round the Deathwing Knights, round into the speeders, the, the Deathwing Knights are just going to come out and kill you. So it's really effective. Now the things which work really well against this sort of um, standing off and shooting you like this is that if you've got a fast army, so things like flyers, things like drop podding units in, with grab, suppressors, anything which can get round behind those screens is actually really hard for the Dark Angel player to deal with. Uh, and classically what I actually end up doing is just forming a big ring of Terminators around the speeders and then just advancing the whole thing up the board as a big ball of death. But it, it means that the speeders are less mobile because they've got to kind of keep up with the Terminators. But it's an effective way around it. The other thing which they're actually quite prone to, if you're a Raven Guard player, um, Snipers can, can actually deal with these six wound speeders quite quickly because you get plus one to hit and plus one to wound. So classically you use Lias and you use 20 sniper scouts like the list which nearly won the LVO. Almost, almost. And um, that thing will kill a speeder or two a turn. It's, it's surprisingly effective at taking them down. And obviously things which are really fast moving because everything's bubbled together, things like smash captains, they can work really well as well. Effectively, if you can get into the middle of that board, which is all clumped up, the, the whole thing will fold incredibly quickly. But if you're just a standoff army with a gun line, you're going to have an absolute nightmare against this unit. Um, the other thing which they use is they can use the Corvus Oculus for plus one to hit. Um, 
and he gets a plus six inch range on one of the speeders, which is a surprisingly efficient relic to use. Now, next one to talk about is the Black Knight. This is one of my favorite units in the Codex. Again, another glass cannon. You're gonna see this a lot in Dark Angels. Um, now, if anyone's ever running more than one unit of these plasma bikes, remember that if you get first turn, only one of the Raven Guard, uh, Ravenwing units can actually do its jinx and just split fire and shoot both of them, and only one of them is gonna get its four up and run will save. Now, the thing which makes these guys so deadly is that you can take a, you can take a uh, Warlord trait, which means that you can pre-game move 12. Now, if they pre-game move 12 and then they advance and, and, uh, and can still fire and uh, charge with speed of the Raven, that means they move 32 inches, which is incredibly effective for character sniping, getting around the back of line of sight blockers to kill all the Thunderfire cannons, um, things like that. And then they can still charge, and then they've got the Vigilus formation, which means that they can drop out of combat, and then they can fight again if they've got that many command points, and they can wrap something. Um, so this is an absolutely deadly um, you know, harassment unit. Um, they can get three damage plasma as well. And because they're part of that Vigilus formation, that one of the speeders just shoots the target they want to shoot at, so they're going to get plus one to hit, and that means that they can safely overcharge the plasma as well. Uh, and classically what I do is I run a chaplain with them as well so before they do the pre-game move I give them plus one to wound if I'm going up against things like Imperial Knights um, so these guys they're really really good and they pack an absolute devastating punch um, just don't underestimate how fast they are now the third thing I want to talk about is the Ravenwing characters um, now I run a Ravenwing Apothecary and if you ever see just a lone Apothecary in an army there's two reasons for it um, well there's actually three reasons and I'll cover them first of all it gives another reason if they're running Terminators to be able to uh, use their Teleporter Homer uh, combined assault stratagem which means they can drop in within six inches because usually the, death, the, uh, the Black Knights they don't last that long so having a character biker means that um, you've got a backup plan for if your Black Knights die the second thing you can do with him is he's very easy to get into position um, because you can double move him with full throttle stratagem which means that um, you can move him 14 then move him again for one command point and as long as he hasn't advanced he can still use the combined assault stratagem which means that with the six inch range for them dropping as well that means that he's got a what a 32 inch threat range for dropping in terminators six inches away from you that's absolutely mad um, the next thing which is really good for him is don't be caught out by this because he can heal a model now if he's healing a model in like a raven unit or he can even heal terminators as well it means that when i add that model back in i just have to put him within two inches of another model so if it if a terminator is two inches and i have to put him two inches away that means i get an extra four inch movement on those terminators so when you're factoring in the threat range for terminators charging you um, and you've just stayed just outside of it. Remember that I can get an extra four inches onto my movement. You can get five inches with bikes as well. So that's a nice little trick that you can do. And I'm saving the best for last. The most deadly thing about this Ravenwing Apothecary is that, bearing in mind, he can move pretty much anywhere on the board with an advance and then another move. Um, he can take a relic, which means that within three inches of him, units don't get their invulnerable saves. Now that can swing a game. Like I played against the Warlock Conclave, and I just lined up my speeders, drove the little bike into the middle of them all, they get minus one to the rim bun save, the land speeders give them um, everything, reroll all chapter master style hits, I get plus one to hit from the vigilance formation, and all of a sudden, you know, that, that warlock conclave is in a lot of problems. So again, this is, this is some really, really powerful things. That one little apothecary in there, I think is some really cool little bit of tech. And if you're a Ravenwing player like myself, you should never leave home without it. Okay, and the last two things that I think is worth talking about is let's talk about the Black Knights. Oh, it's not the Black Knights, the Deathwing Knights and their uh, uh, champion, the uh, the Ancient. So, a Deathwing Knights have gone from pretty much zero to hero in this, uh, in this supplement. Um, their delivery mechanism now is absolutely crazy. Being able to drop within six inches of Ravenwing bikes and more than six inches away with, um, of opponents is really nice, particularly with that Ravenwing apothecary character. Now, they can be buffed with the Chaplain. So at six inch charge, I think you've got a 70% chance of making it and a 90% chance if you reroll one of those dice. So it's already really reliable. Um, you can combine it with the plus two to charge from the Chaplain. Because remember, it's not actually, 
with with the chaplain's uh, plus two to charge, you can't do any other modifiers to um, deep strike. But it's not a modifier because they're just arriving six away, uh, six inches away instead of nine. So it's not actually modifying it at all. So with the chaplain, now you can get a four inch charge. Um, now the cool thing about this is you also get um, six inch pylons and consolidates if you uh, if you keep in range of the chaplain. So those those Deathwing. Uh, <laughs> those Deathwing Knights can just start moving up the board incredibly quickly and they're insanely powerful as well. So defensively, their strats are they can get plus one toughness. So versus like Space Marines, for example, with their Stalker Bolt Rifles, all of a sudden they're wounding on fives. If you're in combat against Strength 4, you're going you're gonna to use the strats for plus one toughness and you can use the Shield Wall for minus one to wound in combat. So now all your Strength 4 is wounding them on sixes. Um, which is ridiculous. And obviously against like ridiculously uh, high strength stuff, you can use transhuman physiology as well, um, which just makes these guys really survivable. Now you can take a relic banner, which I always suggest you do. Um, so you still, with the relic banner, you still get to keep the plus one attack from the ancient as well, which is huge. But you also get a five up fill no pain for models within six inches of him as well. Um, it's sometimes a little bit hard to keep the, uh, the banner up with the... Uh, up with the uh, the actual terminators but particularly in assaults if you drop your first line an inch away from the enemy when you when you charge in and then you leave a inch gap and then you've got your next line in there so that means you're what five six inches back already which means you'd be three within three inches of the apothecary not the apothecary the ancient so you can keep them up there but when they start piling in and consolidating their six inches he has to really run to keep up or make a seven inch charge um, assuming you've got the uh, the chaplain with a plus two charge in there as well. So really, really good. Now, offensively, they're absolutely disgusting as well. Uh, assuming you've got the Ancient there, they're going to get four attacks each. Against Hordes, you've got Stratagem to give them plus one attacks, and now they're getting five attacks each, which means that that unit's getting just over 50 attacks, which are all strength eight. They can get plus one to hit as well, um, and they can fight twice because they're infantry, um, which means that they're getting an absolutely insane... These, these guys, if they fight twice, they're getting over 100 strength eight attacks. Um, you can take the Warlord trait on the Ancient as well, which means that within six inches, Deathwing can reroll uh, wounds against things like uh, vehicles with more than eight wounds or monsters. So against Imperial Knights, you've got strength eight rerolling to wound, uh, which is absolutely insane. But these guys, are gonna, they're going to kill two Imperial Knights a turn if they, if they drop in. They're going to go in, they're going to fight with the rerolls to wound, they're going to move over to the next one with a six inch pylons and consolidates, and they're going to kill that as well. So, super effective. Now, there's another uh, little warlord trait you can use with the death wound, which is deny one psychic power. Um, I've not tried this yet, but it's an auto deny anywhere on the board. Um, now, I think against certain Eldar units, which rely on like jumping into the middle of the board, getting all buffed up, and then quickening over. I think things like that, or, or cancelling a warp time, you know, leaving your opponent out in the open, out of position, I think in certain games that's going to be completely game-changing, and it probably is worth taking, and probably even worth starting the, uh, the banner guy on the table. Okay, so the other unit that I want to talk about, which I've used a little bit, is the Ravenwing Speeder Squadron. So you can take up to five speeders in a squadron, uh, which means that they get plus six inch to the move, so they get plus four inches, so they can move 20 now. Um, but it means that the whole unit, when it jinx, gets a four up and run, a vulnerable save. You can run it in the Vigilist attachment, so it gets plus one per hit um, when you use the signal, the advance. Um, and it means that a chaplain can really buff them up, so they can buff all four speeders at once, four or five speeders. Now, negatives of this unit is um, it gives up full gangbuster points <laughs> in, in uh, ITC missions. Um, and it's a little bit of a glass cannon still, even with a four up and vulnerable save, even without suffering the mo penalty to moving and shooting and getting plus one to hit and uh, in some sort of chaplain buff. It still struggles to make it put its points up because it's the only really squishy thing in your army because everything else is um, you know, untargetable characters or unkillable Deathwing. So I think the Speeder Squadron, I was excited about it at first, but I don't think it's as good as I, as I initially thought it was. Though, if your opponent hasn't got shooting, it is absolutely ridiculous. The amount of firepower that thing can put out for its points is crazy. Okay, last but not least, let's talk Ravenwing Flyers. Now, you're going to see a lot of these. Both versions of the uh, Ravenwing Flyer, the Dark Talon and the Nephilim, are very, very good now. They both get the straight through runs of the plus one to hit versus ground targets. The Nephilim, 
it's just crazy cheap. It's like 145 points or something crazy like that. And for that, it's effectively getting 16 uh, AP minus two heavy bolter shots and two missiles at strength seven, D3 damage. Now the thing which makes it so good is it's getting all the buffs from those uh, speeders. So it's getting the doesn't suffer the penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons if it keeps up with the Talon Master. It's getting ignores cover. It's getting reroll ones to wound. It's getting reroll all hits from Samael. So all of that together. It's crazy. Now it's going to stand next to a Dark Shroud, of course. Uh, so now it's a minus two to hit flower, Flyer. So you have to either waste shots dealing with the Dark Shroud with a four up and vulnerable save, or shoot the plane. Um, obviously, all Ravenwing, um, all Ravenwing uh, Flyers, because the Ravenwing will get the four up jink. Um, now only one in the army can get it, so that's be worth bearing in mind. Uh, and classically, I think people are going to use it on the Dark Shroud, first of all. Now the other version of the uh, Ravenwing Flyer is the uh, Dark Talon, and Dark Talon is very good as well. It's getting that plus six range on its uh, on its bolters, so it's getting a little bit longer range for its uh, rapid fire um, hurricane bolters, and it's got the Rift Cannon as well, which is actually surprisingly good. Uh, again, it's really helping with those Ravenwing buffs, so not suffering the penalties to moving and firing heavy weapons. Um, and it's got the bomb, so it's got a, uh, a lot of ways of dealing mortal wounds, particularly to um, large enemy units um, so again both really really effective flyers um, I think the Nephilim just because it's so much cheaper means that you're going to be seeing it more than the Dark Talon. Okay so let's talk about competitive builds now there's a build which is one of GT recently which is a whole bunch of Ravenwing flyers um, and Talon Masters and Samael in the speeder now I think that's super good um, it's just super powerful um, it's got so much ignores cover AP minus two shooting um, all at long range. If it goes first, it's practically going to table you. If it goes second, it's going to turtle up in the corner behind the Dark Shroud. Now, most players will put the Dark Shroud out of line of sight and just use the reactive four up jink when you try and target it. Now, the way to get around these sort of things, obviously, is if you've got smash captains, if you've got assault units like Sangre de Guard, which you can start on the board and then uh, first turn redeploy. Things like that are going to cause absolute havoc for the Raven Wheel, which can all turtle up. Um, and obviously things which can get around the minus two to hit. Um, things like chapter master style re-rolls, things which give plus one to hit like iron hands. They're going to they're gonna be able to just pretty much ignore the Dark Shroud and just take down two or three of those flyers. And I think as soon as you take down a decent chunk of those flyers, that sort of list is going to run out of steam very quickly. And it's not going to have the screens to uh, protect those tunnel masters in some way else. But it's a top tier list, it's going to do really well, and if it goes first, you're in for a world of trouble. Now the other list that I've been running is essentially um, 9 to 10 Black Knights, 9 to 10 uh, Deathwing Knights with the, with the Ancient, you've got the Apothecary, and then you've got all the Speeders which are just going to sit behind them. Again, another really good list, and it's something which doesn't look that good on paper, when you actually see people play it, it's, you know, it's surprisingly effective. Um, now, the difficulty with this sort of list is that it's if you're if you're facing against a mobile army that they can get the angles on those speeders and as soon as those speeders are dead it's not going to do very well so there you have it guys that's my experience with dark angels at the moment and the reason i made the video is a lot of people were messaging in and asking what i'd run at the recent gt and uh, how i'd found them and what i thought was effective so um i think probably the flyer build is a little bit more effective but it's more susceptible to a turn one um disaster shall we say if it doesn't go first um the terminator bomb i think is also surprisingly good and hey if you just want to run terminators because you think terminators are cool um they will do you proud guarantee you i've taken them to six games at a tournament and they were absolutely awesome so there we have it take care guys